Legends of Tomorrow Season 2, Episode 8, The Chicago Way. Now, this is the mid-season finale for The Legends of Tomorrow, and I think it was a pretty fun episode. I was surprised. Um, you know, this whole time, it's been like, all right, we have Damian Dark, and we have Eobar Thawne. So they've been working together and stuff. The start of the episode comes in, it's like, all right, they're talking to Capone. I knew that, of course, from the promo. So they're talking with him, and it's like, oh, you think you two can do this? And like, there's actually not two of us, there's three of us. And then here comes Malcolm Merlin, because he cannot stay away from being an overall a-hole of a villain. So he comes into this. Um, I am curious how often they're going to use him, because based on the dialogue, you could tell that they went to 2016, or they went to some time frame. Um, I was kind of confused. I was curious how that was going to play out, but... He mentioned, like, oh, you look good for someone who's come back from the dead. So he's definitely, he has to be from, like, the 2016 um, timeline. So they went and picked him up and brought him back. And it's like, all right, so now he's a part of the villains. But John Barrowman, I'm pretty sure he's doing, like, a bunch of other shows, or at least one other show. So I don't think he'll be in a ton of the episodes. I don't think he's going to be, like, the third villain for the rest of the season. That would be cool, because I actually do, like... Uh, Merlin as a villain I think he's actually a great villain but I don't know because the actor always kind of he, he's always kind of popping in and out so hopefully he actually is in the show um, at least for a couple of episodes and they you know do it that way but it would be awesome if he came on permanently as the main character and um, you know he was one of three villains now instead of just two so we got these characters running around and I love what they did in this episode because they talk about time a lot like we find out what the whole point was of this amulet is to get this thing called the spirit of destiny and i love the way that they're playing with it because eobar Thawne, he knows that he can't go to certain places he can't do certain stuff because he wants to be you know for those of you who might not watch flash basically his whole thing is if flash doesn't exist neither does eobar Thawne, or at least not as reverse flash he'll exist in the timeline but he won't be reverse flash he won't have this ultimate power which he loves the power but he hates the flash so that's like his infinite conundrum like that's his character like that's his crux so if he can change that where he can still exist as reverse flash but still kill off the original flash that's what he's gonna do so they you know he knows that he can't jump around to certain time frames he's still trying to change a bunch of random stuff in the past which i don't know why but you know, they needed the amulet and stuff like that. And this whole episode was actually just a plan. Like, they did a bunch of other things um, that would have been bad, like trying to kill a president and do this type of stuff. But this whole thing was like, you know, we're just going to, you know, use Capone. But really, it was just a plan to basically trick the legends and do everything that they did. Like, basically, the villains won. Like, the, the villains actually won this episode. Like, they got their plan worked 100%. They didn't end up killing anyone, but they got the amulet, or at least the second half of the amulet that they were looking for, put it together, they have their map and everything, and so we have these three characters, um, Damien Dark, of course, is meant to die, the reverse Flash is meant to die, um, Merlin's totally fine, he's just a villain, like, he's a, he's alive, he's fine, he lost a hand, but, like, no big deal, he's still super rich, I believe, so... There's nothing that he really needs to change that much. I mean, maybe save his son without changing anything else. He could do that. But I'm like, he's actually okay. Like, I mean, I know he lost his son, and that, that's a huge deal. Um, he also technically lost his wife. He lost actually lost a f couple of people. But he's not doing as bad as, like, Damien Dark and Ian Barthon, who both were killed. So they're trying to actually survive and change their futures and live forever. Or, well... Well, Damian Dark actually probably could live forever. I don't know what his deal is. I still don't know if that's uh, Lazarus Pit or, you know, what the deal is. Because I don't know if he's that connected with them or what the case is. But either way, they have, you know, the amulet now. Or, you know, both pieces of the amulet. And the way this episode ended, I was not expecting. So, they have to go to Rip Hunter. And it starts off super cool because it's Rip. He's like, it seems to be Rip. And so he's running, I thought he was running from, like, time police, and I'm like, okay, that's interesting, like, he's in the future again, like, that's where he left to, and he's running, he's in his jacket, and he trips and stuff, and I'm like, okay, and then it ends up being a movie, and Rip Hunter, not only looks really weird, because he's got, like, the, he's got, like, that old, like, the 70s, uh, beard going on, but 
he's not British, or at least he's not, you know, using his actual British accent, he's using an American accent, and that was not, or he's not, I don't know, I would assume the guy was actually British, I've never seen an American actor do a British accent, but British actors always can do an American accent, that would be amazing if he was actually American and he was doing a British accent the whole time, because normally people don't do that too well, um, but I assume that he's actually British, so he's acting like, well, he's being an American director, like, that's what he's doing, and he's making a movie about his own life, which I find really funny, actually, but he's in Los Angeles making a movie about himself, kind of just hidden in plain sight, like, that's where he left to. I thought it was going to be, it's still an epic, it's a crazy reveal, it's not like the epic reveal, I thought it was going to be where it's like, you know, when are we going to see Rip Hunter? I knew he was going to come back, and, but it was just like, when, when do we get Rip Hunter again? What's going to happen? Where's he going to be? And it's not as crazy as I thought. It's like, no, he kind of just took off. He's in hiding in time, of course. And he's making a movie in L.A. Maybe his family's with him. Maybe he was able to take his family out of time. And he was able to save them. Who knows? I don't think that's the case. But for whatever reason, he's making a movie about his own life. I don't. I just don't know what to expect from that. He's doing the American accent thing. Um, you know, he, he's got, like, the long hair and you know, the beard and mustache stuff going on, so it was very interesting seeing that as the ending, like, this is really weird, like, him with an American accent, he's just a movie director, it was just weird, so, crazy ending, second person to come back in, you know, within the shows, he wasn't dead, though, um, they did something else in one of the other shows, I won't say which one, um, but I thought that was a crazy ending, I'm like, okay, so they have to find Rip Hunter, I assume that that's going to take away all his stuff about wanting to be a director and making a movie about his own life. That's probably out the window. You got Reverse Flash, Damian Dark, and Malcolm Merlin coming after you. I don't think he's going to be hiding anymore. Like, the team is going to find him. He's going to have to go back um, to... I don't know if he'll be... Ca I assume he'll be captain. I mean, he was the original captain, so maybe once he comes back, Sarah will step down to number two again. But that was very interesting. I was like, okay... That's a crazy reveal. Um, I know I jumped like right to the end of the episode, but Rip Hunter's back, and not in the way I think any of us <laughs> were expecting. So it was it was a nice little surprise there. But I thought it was a good ending to the episode. Definitely a million questions just because of you know if it was just him running through time, it's like oh man he's in danger. He went like this is the random time period he's in. But then it's like no, this is the random time period. But he's also acting like an American director he's made his way to the point where he is an american director who knows what fake name he's using but somehow he's gotten to the point where he's an american director and it's just very interesting they're probably going to do it like he's the reason that they made certain movies like in the 80s and stuff like that that would be really funny but i am excited to see how they do this like what the case is going to be with rip um how quickly he like goes back into you know fighting shape you know, stuff like that, so I am excited for them to come back for the mid-season premiere, without a doubt, I don't, I just can't wait to see what they do with Rip again, now that he's officially back on the show, but the rest of this episode I thought was really good too, like, it, it really, mostly the focus was on Stein, outside of the main mission, I think Stein was the big focus, number two was probably, um, the little rivalry between Ray and Nate, which was amazing in that opening sequence when Sarah came down there she's like don't make me come back down here and she laughed and they're like oh don't make me come back down she's like hey and they froze and looked at her and then she just walked she didn't even say anything she just said hey and then like left out again that was probably the funniest scene in the whole episode they're just like oh don't make me come back down and like like they got busted and like froze so I love that scene that was hilarious to me but them working together and just arguing the whole episode even at the end after they you know won Nate was talking to Ellie and she's like, yeah, some idiot, and he, like, looks over at Ray, and he's like, well, he was trying to do the right thing, like, even to the end of the episode, after they already, you know, kind of made up or whatever, they were still kind of, you know, poking fun at each other, but, you know, they had their little rivalry thing going on the whole episode, and then, of course, the other story was Stein in this one, and, you know, him dealing with that aberration that is his daughter and actually uh revealing that to sarah in this episode and her saying almost the exact same thing that he was saying um during the crossover event which once again i mentioned that for all the episodes they found someone to just be like oh the dominators she did it too it was like you've been weird since the dominators like they did that in all three shows um but i guess you gotta it's you know aliens so you gotta reference it but 
he tells her the truth and like I said, she says pretty much the exact same thing he was saying before where it's like, oh, she's an aberration and stuff like that, and, you know, in last week's episode. And I kind of like that idea. And then he's like, you know, but she's not that anymore because he's gaining these memories now that time is kind of adjusted even more so. He's gaining more and more memories and he's talking about like her in kindergarten and wanting to sing uh, the periodic table instead of uh, the ABCs and stuff. And I just thought that was really interesting because he's gaining more and more memories and he, he was already attached to her um, in the last episode at the end of the crossover event, but now he's gaining more and more memories. He sees the woman pushing the stroller and he has a flash of that, which you know causes the cops, the cops and Ness to walk right past them. And I just like that. Something about it, I was like, this is actually a really good story to me, him having these emotions where he was thinking about it logically, even though... Excuse me, I don't know what they, I mean, I guess all they could really do is travel back in time again and have him talk to his past self and say, hey, pay more attention, but not too much attention, just calm down a little bit. So, I don't know if they're going to change it or what the case is. He's mentioned, um, or he mentioned early on in the episode, like, well, no one will have to find out if her um, contribution to history is very minimal, and admittedly, with her being his daughter, I kind of don't think that'll be the case. Like, they're going to find something where it's like, oh, look what she did, your daughter. Or, like, you know, they go way in the future. It's like, oh, look at your granddaughter doing something insanely important because, you know, he's like, her impact could be tiny, but, yeah, technically it could be. But if she had a kid or if she had three kids and all of them became, like, Nobel Prize winners, stuff like that, that means they did something big to time. So... I don't know how this is going to play out, if they're actually going to alter it or, I don't know, roll with the punches. I, I don't know exactly how it'll play out because at this point, you know, it's it seems like it's resolved. Like, okay, you know, that's, it is what it is and they still have to talk about it, but it could show up as an actual issue, you know, in the future. Like, literally in the future where, you know, she does have a huge impact on the timeline, whether it's herself or her having children and they do something different, so... I don't think it's going to be as simple as they, you know, make it out to be. Like, at, at this point, it's just, like, an emotional thing for Stein. But I just feel like somewhere it's going to get dark. And it's like, we have to erase her. I feel like it's, I don't know why. But for some reason, I feel like it's just too easy. And it's like, you know, nothing bad has happened from it. It's just, they're not, they aren't supposed to do it. But it happened and everything so far is fine. But I feel like somewhere down the line, it's just going to get dark. And it's going to be really depressing. Because it's going to be like, hey... She does have too much of an effect on the timeline. We have to go back to your past self and, I don't know, slow him down or something. I don't know. But I feel like that might be where it's headed. I hope it, it's not like that. That would be, emotionally speaking, I think that would be a great episode. But character-wise, that would just that would be really sad to see Stein have to go through that. So I hope it doesn't happen. But I don't know. I, I don't know why I'm being so pessimistic about it. I just feel like somewhere down the line they're going to get really dark with it. And it's like, yeah, we have to get rid you know, have to get rid of her, so, hope I'm wrong, but, I don't know, just, in my mind, I feel like that's where it might be headed, just for, like, a crazy impact, um, to the series, so, could be wrong, could, could be something that comes up, I hope not, like I said, but, that was a really good crux of this episode, they did have another big point, like, they had it for the promo, which is Mick, I felt like his part of the story wasn't as big as Stein's, but it, you know, I guess it was, I guess maybe he was number two, and, you know, Ray and Nate's mini rivalry was number three, but, him going through and changing, I thought was very interesting. I knew that Captain Cole was going to be a hallucination, which is unfortunate because I like the character and also like uh, Wentworth Miller. And it's always funny to see the two of them together for people who never watched it. They were together on Prison Break. I haven't mentioned, mentioned that in forever, but they used to be work together on Prison Break. They were the two main characters in that show. And then they ended up being Captain Cold and Heat Wave, so it's always interesting seeing them together, because, like, man, that's just really weird that, that's, you know, that's how that played out. But, you know, I knew he was going to be a hallucination, which is unfortunate, but it was still cool to see him, and he's there, and he's like that old part of Mick's mind where he shouldn't do certain things, and it's this development of his character, which I found very interesting, actually. It's this development of Mick, to a point that he'd never been to before, because he's the guy who just doesn't give a crap, but, you know, in the forefront, he actually does, like, he, he doesn't care in the beginning, but it's like, alright, 
we need a plan. We got to do this my way. We do have to go in. We have to sacrifice ourselves or risk our lives at least to save our friends. And so he has his subconscious, which is in the form of his old partner. And it's like, hey, just be your old self. Don't care about this. Don't do this stuff. Don't be the hero. Just be, you know, what we used to be. Just be the villain who doesn't really give a crap about anybody else. And when it gets to the end, he's kind of like, you know, I, I don't remember the exact line uh, that they had Snark give, but Rory basically like, you know, if I just suck to my guns, I'd be dead like you or something like that. So I don't know. I thought that was interesting. And they also seem to be pushing the idea that he and Amaya might end up together. I don't know if that's going to be the case, but she actually kissed him on the cheek. I'm like, okay. Cause they've been pushing that like they it's always the two of them that end up together they had their whole they had the little you know body and clyde moment also a funny scene when um they're in the car it's like aren't you forgetting you know nate and rain he's like oh those two idiots just get in the way or something like that and it's like um we're like right here and he's he kind of just looks he's like oh like they're already here whatever so just get in the back but they always seem to get partnered up so it seems like that might be headed towards a relationship or something like that so i don't know but I thought this was a great episode uh, for a mid-season finale. Also, I gotta be honest, love this episode for Eobar Thawne. I mean, he was running all throughout this episode. Like, every freaking, every, like, ten minutes of the episode is, like, reverse flashes running. Like, the beginning of the episode, he takes out Capone's dudes. When they get to the bar, he's running through and zipping past and kidnapping people. He, um, replaces Stein and, you know, um you know, takes over for him, who we also don't see in this episode, so we still, if I remember right, it was, I was super late when I watched this episode, um, but if I remember right, we don't see exactly what happened with Stein, like, they, oh no, they did, they did find him, that's how they got the amulet, that's right, never mind, see, super late, I forgot, so they do end up getting him, but he was just running around the whole episode, uh, we did get to see them use the, the speedster gun on them, which had varying effects, they, you know tv style because when he first got hit by Jax, it was like okay it seemed to affect him for like two and a half seconds he's like oh you slowed me down but it's temporary and he got right back up and took off but when amaya hit him she kicked the crap out of him for like almost a minute and then he got up and i was like uh oh, tv they they just don't time things out all the time but it was awesome watching him run around like even the scene when he was in the library looking for the amulet and it's just on the TV, and Jax is looking at it, and he's just, like, running throughout this tiny room, just zipping back and forth. I was like, this is so simple, but it looks so cool to me. And then he's running through the building, or through the ship, I should say, knocking people down, just running past people in general. And I was like, this just looks cool. Like, just watching him, like, run past people, and, you know, he's running and kidnapping people, and he's just running past them and knocking them down, running, you know, tr almost going through certain people because he was trying to take out Amaya at the end. But it was fun. I was like, man, I love getting to see that. And maybe it's because I'm so used to the Flash. It's like, oh, Barry runs around. And, you know, it's like the, the yellow lightning. And, you know, it's like a mix of red and yellow. And then we have, um, you know, other speedsters and, you know, their lightning and stuff. But for Eobar Thawne, I feel like his lightning trails way more than anybody else. Like with Barry, it's like, okay, it trails like a tiny bit. And he kind of has a little bit of lightning. But for, I swear, for Eobar Thawne, it's like, if he runs, it's just like a trail of lightning left behind him. Or maybe he's just moving that fast. But it's just really, really cool. Like, he's just running. So, and plus, he's super, like, he is, um, I think at this point, he's like the second fastest. I don't know if Wally's faster than Reverse Flash, but, like, if you watch The Flash out of everything they've shown the characters do, I'm pretty sure Reverse Flash is, like, the second fastest speedster still that they've had on the show. And... I mean, maybe that explains it. Maybe that's why the lightning trails so long, because he's moving so fast that even the lightning can't, you know, stick on him. But it just looks so much cooler to me when, to see him run, because the trail just seems to last longer. So that was awesome. Visually, I was just like, this is just cool to look at, and it's, you know, completely red lightning, which is pretty sweet, too. But I thought it was fun watching him just zip around this whole episode. He was running and kidnapping, running and fighting. Uh, he got knocked down a couple times, but, of course, he gets back up. Like, seeing his eyes, like you know, kind of glow red and the lightning, like, forms closer around his eyes and then it kind of gets to the rest of his body. That was really cool, too. So, love the visuals uh, for him running around this whole episode. I kind of, kind of want to see only him running around because that was just really fun. But it was nice. You know, they, they, ultimately the team ends up together at the end. 
But, like I said, the bad guys, they won. Everything they did was like they took the bait at the beginning of the episode. Uh, do you think this person will be mad? No, I th in fact, I think they'll be super happy. And that was the plan to have them rescue Stein because it wasn't actually Stein the whole time. And it, it was just crazy. I'm like, this whole episode was just the villains saying, all right, let's do this, let's do this, and let's do this. And every single time, it worked out perfectly. And it, it was just crazy. You know, I was just like, man. You know, I didn't even think about that to the end of the episode either. I was like, every time something went right for them, it was like, oh, glad they did that. And it was like, that was a plan. That was, They wanted them to do this, or they wanted them to do that. And the whole episode worked out perfectly for the villains. And I kind of like that. It's a bad ending for the heroes, but... Sometimes it's nice to see the you know the heroes lose because it it makes it more realistic. The heroes can't always win every single time, but you know the way they did it was just it was very diabolical. It was very genius evil villain type. Where it was like the whole episode was just let's do this plan. Oh that worked. Let's do this plan. Oh that worked as well. So I actually really enjoyed that aspect of it. But I think it was a good mid season finale. Enjoyed the action. Loved some of the comedy elements, especially just that Nate and Ray beginning thing with them being upset or, you know, mocking Sarah. I, I just love that all around because that was hilarious to me. But definitely want to know what you guys thought about this episode. So please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And of course, um, what the heck is going on with Rip? Why is he a 1980s director? You know, like, like what's the deal with that? What's, what's going on there? Or 1970s. I can't remember... Um, I think it may have been the 70s, and it may have even been the 60s, I want, because I feel like it was 1976, but it could have also been 1967, because I don't really remember, I just remember it was an older time, I kept saying 80s, but it was definitely, like, either, I believe it was the 70s, based on the way he was dressed, um, but why, why, why is he doing that, why choose that time, of all time, like, no one knew who he was anyway, so, I don't know, I guess he couldn't be too close to his friends, because they'd be like, oh, there's, this director Rip Hunter and that would have changed things so of course if he does it before any of them are born I guess that makes a lot of sense but it was just it, it was interesting and the American accent so curious how that's gonna play out um I'm also curious if Merlin's gonna stay as a permanent uh villain like I said I would love to see that and it's like they just add him on as one of the main villains but I want to know uh, your predictions as to or just your theories why is Rip in this location why is he doing this um how is this going to play out? I do want to know what you guys think about them adding Malcolm Merlin. Do you want him to stay on as a villain? Are you tired of him as a villain? If you watch Arrow, maybe you don't care too much to see him anymore. Um, I think he had enough time as a break from a villain because that was, I, I believe that was like last season. So I'm personally okay if he comes back as a villain. I don't mind. I, I actually prefer it because now there's three really good villains all together. So I don't know. They seem to be building them up and that might be leading to a big crossover that I'm hoping for next season where it's a bunch of villains and not just random enemies that the heroes have to fight. But, like I said, want to know what you think about it, um, your theories and everything, and of course what you thought about the episode in general. So please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.